That's the thing. Illegal immigration helps the countries that are exporting the people. L legal immigration ex is uh, hurts the countries that are exporting the people. So it is a net benefit to the whole world to have us have an open border so they can send the shitty people we don't want here and help those countries. What's up to all my free thinkers out there? The godless commies over at YouTube decide to demonetize the channel and start deleting videos without giving me a reason. I can't imagine why, so if you want to catch me live, I'm streaming Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time over on Rumble. I also do some gaming streams on a different channel over there. So if you want to see me or you want to support me or you want to connect on social media, all links are in the link tree below. And all announcements will be made in the Freethinkers Rebellion Discord server, so make sure that you join up there. All right, back to the video. It's not our responsibility to save the third world. And I'm going to show you a video, which I thought was amazing. Might be the best explanation I've ever seen on immigration. All right. And this is 28 years old. I love the old stuff that ends up being really on point. Make sure you guys leave a like comments, comments. If you've seen this before, this is old, but I have never seen this before. And I thought this explanation really hit, hit the point home. Some people say that mass immigration into the United States can help reduce world poverty. Is that true? Well, no, it's not. And let me show you why. This gumball represents the one million legal immigrants that the United States has taken every year on average since 1990. Now, who in the world deserves our humanitarian compassion? The World Bank has one measure of the desperately poor of the world. They make less than $2 a day. And how many people make less than $2 a day in the world? We'll start with Africa. In Africa alone, there are 650 million people who make less than $2 a day. 650 million. And in India, another 890 million people, desperately poor. China adds another 480 million people making less than $2 a day. And unfortunately, the rest of Asia has a heartbreaking 810 million people who the World Bank say make less than $2 a day. And finally, there's 105 million of Latin America's population that are desperately poor. All told, the World Bank says there are 3 billion people in the world, 3 billion people who are desperately poor, making less than $2 a day. That's 3,000 gumballs. And every year, we take a million and suggest that we've somehow made a humanitarian difference. Of course, we don't pull our immigrants from these desperately poor populations, do we? These people are too poor, too sick, too disconnected to make it here as immigrants. We tend to pull our immigrants out of the better off poor of the world. And Mexico tends to define the type of immigrant that we bring here because the plurality of people come from Mexico. And Mexico is poor. How many people in the world live in countries that have average incomes lower than that of Mexico? And the World Bank tells us that that number is these 3 billion plus another 2.6 billion people. Five point six billion people in the world who live in countries with average incomes below that of Mexico. That's 5,600 gumballs. And so what is it that the elites are telling us? They're telling us that when we take this one million immigrants, that we somehow or another are tackling world poverty. And we have to do it regardless of the effect on our unemployed, the working poor, the most vulnerable members of our society, regardless of the effect on our natural resources. E even if we went by the most radical proposals in Washington, which are to actually double our immigration to two million a year, which would totally overwhelm our physical, natural, and social infrastructures, we couldn't make a noticeable difference. And we may be really hurting the impoverished people of the world, because the million that we do take are among the most energetic, 
often the better educated, certainly the most dissatisfied people that if they did not immigrate would be the agents for change to improve the lot of all the people in these countries. The true heroes in the global humanitarian field are the people in these countries who have the wherewithal to immigrate to another country, but instead stay in their countries to apply their skills to help their fellow countrymen. Unfortunately, our immigration system tends to entice these very type of people to abandon their countrymen. The impossibility of making even a dent is actually worse than it looks here. Because last year, when we took 1 million immigrants, these countries added births over deaths, 80 million more people into the impoverished population. And this year, Congress is bringing in a million legal immigrants. And this year, according to the United Nations, these countries are expected to add another 80 million people. And next year, you could be quite sure that Congress, unless stopped by the American voters, will bring in another million immigrants. And these countries, unfortunately, will be adding another 80 million people into these impoverished nations. We could take 5 million a year, but we'd never get ahead of what's happening in these countries, not in this century. Don't you see? Immigration can never be an effective or significant way to deal with the suffering people of the world. They have to be helped where they live. 99.9% .9 of them will never be able to immigrate to a rich country. There's no hope for that. They have to bloom where they're planted. The only place that 99.9% .9 of these people can be helped is where they live. Let's help them there. That was the most brilliant explanation of immigration and the numbers that I've ever seen. He's making a very statistical image. Like he's taking the numbers and transforming it into a very simple to understand image. And I thought that was really good because he's saying, you know, we take this much, we bring it here. And then that makes us these like wonderful people who are helping the world. We're not helping the world by taking the best parts of the world and bringing them here and abandoning there. You're just making that area this much weaker, this much weaker. And in a lot of cases, as he's saying, we're taking the best and brightest from around the world, enticing them to come here. And then when they do come here, their population gets a huge loss of the best people that could improve their, their world, right? Because if you have the doctors and you have the scientists and you have, you know, anyone who's massively ambitious in business and they're like, Hey, you know what? kind of sucks here. Uh, I want the American dream. And then they come, well, that country just lost those people and they could improve the economy. They could come up with scientific benefits. They could be a doctor and help help people that are sick. You know, they would be a leader in that community, potentially move things forward. And he's talking shit about Africa, but that's, that's the truth. That's a hundred percent. He was saying that there's like 800 million or I think he said 800 million people in Africa that make less than $2 a day in Africa. You know, there's the middle East is in Africa. We're dealing with that right now. We're dealing with our open Southern border and South America and Africa is shipping giant groups of people to us. It's estimated that in the Biden administration, we've had somewhere between 10 and 20 million people come through which is like four or five of those gumballs a year, right? And it's not legal immigration. So it's not vetted best and brightest. They're actually sending the destitute people that can't live here. And they're saying like, what do you mean they can't live here? They can figure it out. No, they can't. You can't take somebody in a third world survival situation and then just drop them in a first world. Because you're seeing in Europe, you're seeing locally, you got these people that are like, bugging people, they're eating their pets, they're raping everyone, they're jerking off into the, the drains. I, was, I saw a video of someone actually having intercourse with a car, which 
I really don't ever want to see some shit like that again. But I'm just saying, like, you have the absolute dregs of the third world being dropped off at the doorstep of the first world. And we didn't help them. And we're not helping us. I mean, we did help them a little bit. If they're emptying their jails and they're emptying their insane asylums and they're taking people that are not contributing to society and then spending a little bit of money and sending them over here, it actually works out in their favor as a benefit for that country. But legal immigration hurts that country. That's the thing. Illegal immigration helps the countries that are exporting the people. Legal immigration X is uh, hurts the countries that are exporting the people. So it is a net benefit to the whole world to have us have an open border so they can send the shitty people we don't want here and help those countries. <laughs>